First of all, I'm going to say very little because I'd like um, Norma to talk about her experience and to show you a little video of the project. But just by way of introduction, um, our project was called Remember Us, Muslim Communities in the First World War. Um, and this was funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund and delivered by the West of Scotland Regional Equality Council. So what our aim was to look at the involvement of over 400,000 Muslim soldiers who fought for the British side during the First World War, um, which is a fact that only 2% of the British population are aware of, according to the think tank British Future. Um, so the way that we did this, we had a very limited time frame, um, and what we wanted to do was create a community exhibition at the end of it. Um, so the way that we did this was through um, creative participatory research um, and through participatory photography. So we worked with two groups, um, one in Glasgow, which was very diverse and intergenerational. We had um, people from all over the world and from everything from mid-twenties to late-sixties. Um, we also worked with a youth group up in Arica, which was um, very non-diverse, um, and it was extremely interesting to hear why they were interested in being involved in the project and their learning journey about it. So we took over six weeks, we looked at different themes, so we looked very strongly at propaganda um, in recruitment of Indian soldiers and why on earth they would fight for the British in the first place. Um, under colonial rule. We looked at numbers, we looked at letters, we looked at recruitment and we looked at the sort of achievements or the, the Victoria Cross that was won by some of the soldiers. We looked at this through looking at media literacy, we looked at different techniques to sort of analyse history and the absence of minority communities from mainstream narratives. Um, we looked at, we connected that to the present day and sort of how mainstream press um, is portraying Muslim communities now and the history of that. So we found very interesting things about the Daily Mail and its history, which I'd encourage you all to look at, it's fascinating. Um, and we also did a lot of photography. So this was really, how do we sort of portray things that we found out about history? There was a lot of restrictions around copyright and what we could reproduce from the historical um, resources we found in the British Library and the Imperial War Museum. But we got in touch with the British Muslim Heritage Centre who very kindly let us reprint their entire exhibition. Um, which is called Stories of Sacrifice. So some of it we have here with us today and we'll give you a chance to look around at all later. Um, but one of the key things we did was really explore soldiers' stories. So we found a book by an academic called David Omisi and he'd really brought together um, hundreds and thousands of stories. But again, this is a secondary source and it was, you know, he decided what was in and what was out. So we sort of analysed that um, critically as well. And the way we interpreted this with the groups, um, we used abstract photography techniques. So we read the letters in the diaries that they'd written and we sort of thought about how, what were they trying to express and the different layers of censorship involved and what that would mean for individuals and communities. And the teams produced actually over 80 photographs that are in the full exhibition. So this is really just a fraction of it. Um, and what they did was take photographs that made them think about the themes and then they captioned them, sometimes using the words of the soldiers themselves from their letters and sometimes about how they responded to it. So this for us was really a starting point um, and in no way an authoritative account of anything. It was really about us exploring um, what we learnt and just producing something that for us displayed our learnings. Um, and we were really keen to put this together with the British Muslim Heritage Centre's exhibition so that we could show both their more historical analysis and then our sort of interpretation of that. So in terms of reach, we worked directly with 31 intergenerational individuals over this time period. Um, we then ran two community exhibitions, um, reaching almost 3,000 individuals now, um, and very much pop-up exhibitions. We were at the Festival of Light in Pollock Shields, we had an exhibition at the Project Cafe here in Glasgow, um, and one at our centre in the Napier's Hall Street. Um, so this project is now officially finished, um, but we're really hoping to move on and look at different minority communities. So we're keen to look at the African contribution, and also places in the Middle East that have really never properly been explored, um, and there's very little resource. Also, by way of disclosure, there's, there's not a lot about women's stories in this exhibition, which is another thing that we really want to explore further. It's not something that we found easily, um, and it was a very short time period. So I'd now like to introduce Norma, who's one of our fantastic team members, to talk a little bit about her experience. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm just here to share um, the reasons why I volunteered for the project. So when I came here in um, 2015, um, as an international student, um, I, I, well, I enjoyed my time in Glasgow, getting to know people. Um, I find that Glaswegians are friendly, uh, a little bit laid back, but really friendly and wonderful people. Um, but over the course of a um, few months when I was here, uh, there was, um, I think there was Paris attack and then a few other um, terrorist attacks um, around Europe. 
So <laughs> that affected me as a, as a student, as a Muslim, because um, I had uh, various issues of Islamophobic attacks. Um, one, one simple example was that um, somebody threw, besides saying words to me, there was somebody, who, somebody threw cigarette butt on me. So, <clears throat> um, as an international student, as, a, as somebody who has no, nobody, in, nobody I know in the country, I felt isolated. And then negative thoughts um, started to occur. So I realized that I need to do something about it and I need to use my knowledge. I'm, a, I'm studying, I'm doing PhD in media in Glasgow Uni. So I realized that I need to do something about it um, and I need to utilize my knowledge in media and to channel it in a positive way. So I then joined some voluntary um, uh, societies and one of it is WestRed. Now through WestRed and on this uh, project, I learned well, firstly, I didn't know that uh, there were Muslims involved in the World War One. Um, one of the reasons I realized that there was no um, there was no exposure was because I realized the the media here and and the mainstream media to a certain extent frames uh, the Muslim community in a negative way. Um, and as a media student, I realized that. This impacts the society. I notice that uh, coming from a multicultural background, I notice that the communities here, as much as they are in, as, as much as they are engage, engaged with one another, there is also separation in terms, especially when you talk, talk about religion. So, and I feel that the media is playing a part, a significant part in making people segregate between one another when there could be many reasons for us to unite but the media is only emphasizing on certain aspects to separate the society so by joining Westrack's um, project on Muslim communities I was able to hide, um, apply my knowledge in media literacy um, through looking at Daily Mail and how the Muslim communities were portrayed from the past to the present um, I was also able to get to know more people um, and I realized that uh, as, um, as, as we live as a community, we don't live alone, we live as a community, we always need to engage with one another of different uh, religion of different races and so, so with this um, I think that it's the importance of establishing community projects such as this is to create awareness on contemporary issues as well as a way to channel out um, a, a, a medium of educating societies, a medium of educating communities and a way to channel out so, uh, a way to channel societal integration between one another. So I think having this project is a good move by, by West Red and um, and the last point, point I want to say is that um, we need to find a way to connect societies to, under, uh, to understand one another, to respect and to tolerate at the same time. Because only through understanding, respect and tolerance can we find unity between one another. And one of the projects is through this. Thank you.